Hello, everybody. Welcome to section 8.2, where we are going to be classifying angles. Whether you know it or not, you see angles everywhere. In this chapter, we're going to learn how to classify and name the different types of angles. Here, in this parking lot, we actually can see almost all of the angles that we're going to be learning about. Even this cheesy slice of pepperoni goodness is made up of angles. So let's get into it. The target of this section is I can identify angles and angle pairs. On the left, we have a list of the vocab. By the end of this video, you should be able to recognize, define, and give examples of all of these different things. So let's start off with angle. An angle is made up of two rays. In this picture, we can see one and two. Two rays leaving from a single point. Now, this single point is called the vertex. In this picture, it is where the plane took off. The distance in between these two rays is where our angle is formed, and that is measured in degrees. So like we just mentioned, the distance in between two rays is defined as the angle, and this is measured in degrees. So let's say this is 45 degrees. A degree is a unit of measurement that we use to measure angles. And if we think about it in a different way, we can think about a clock. Okay, here's our clock. In the center, we have our vertex, or the point in which the two rays form. One hand, we have our hour hand, and then we have our minute hand. Where a clock has 60 minutes all around the outside, right? the measurement for a clock is minutes, whereas a measurement for angles is degrees. There are 360 degrees in one full circle. Now there's a certain way that we have to label angles. So if this ray right here is labeled A, and this ray down here is labeled B, and the vertex here is labeled C. If we were to write or label this angle, we would write it out as, as the angle, draw a little picture of an angle, A, and then we go to the vertex, C, and then we label the second ray, B. So this angle would be called A, C, B. Now, we could also write it as B, then we go to our vertex, C. Then we go to our other ray, A. If you notice, the vertex is always in the middle. So when you're thinking about it, think ray, vertex, ray. A good old vertex sandwich. Mm. We classify angles underneath four different categories. Right, acute, obtuse, and straight. So to start off, let's look at a right angle. Right angle makes 90 degrees. And we show that by forming a little box around the vertex. So we know by showing that box that it has an exact measurement of 90 degrees. Next we have an acute angle. This is an angle that has a measurement greater than zero but less than 90 degrees, as shown here. I like to remember it as, oh, just a little cute angle. Next, we have an obtuse angle. So this is an angle that's greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180. And lastly, we've got a straight angle, which you can probably guess is pretty much a straight line. But it's important to note that the vertex is in the middle. If the vertex wasn't in the middle and was on the end, well, that's just a ray. An angle must have two rays. Next, you try, but after you're done, there's more, so don't close your iPad yet. In this you try, classify the following angles as right, acute, obtuse, and straight. Go ahead and click pause and give it a whirl. So let's take a look at the first one. M, or the measure, of angle AXC. First, we start at A, to our vertex X, and then up to C. 
we'll use the measurements on the protractor to count how many degrees are in between ray A and ray C. So if we count along the protractor, oops, we count 75. There are 75 degrees. So 75 degrees, is that 90 degrees? Is that less than 90 degrees but greater than zero? Greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees? Or is that a straight line? And that we label as acute. Uh, and our next angle, we have the measurement of angle E. So we start at ray E. X to our vertex C. So if we count the degrees between E and C, we'll use the inside of the protractor. It's a little easier. And we get 91. Zero 0.5, which tells us that our angle is obtuse. Now, the last angle we're looking at is from D, X, B. Now, it's a little difficult because our protractor doesn't read from zero here. We start at ray D, which is at 100 and 25 degrees. And then we have to subtract where ray B is, which is at 35 degrees. If we do the math, we get 90 degrees. And so we actually have a right angle. And we can add our little box. Our last topic of this section are complementary and supplementary angles. These are how two angles relate to one another. Let's start with complementary. Complementary angles are when two angles, let's say angle A and angle B, add up to exactly 90 degrees. Now supplementary is really similar to complementary, but it's where the sum of two angles, say angle A and angle B, is equal to 180 degrees. Now it's your turn. See if you can classify the two different angles as either complementary, supplementary, or neither. Go ahead and click pause when you're ready to reveal the answers. Good luck. So first, let's take a look at angle D, X, E. If we measure that on the protractor, we get about 55 degrees. Now, if we look at angle A, X, B, use the outside of the protractor, we get 35. If we add these up, we get 90 degrees. Are they complementary, supplementary, or neither? Well, they are complementary. So now let's check out the next example. So first, we'll look at angle D, X, E, and B, X, C. So angle D, X, E, if we go along the inside, we get 55 degrees. We'll look at angle BXC. Now we'll have to do a little side math because we start at degree 75 and we end at degree 35. So we'll have to subtract the two to find the distance in between. 75 minus 35 equals 40. So back to our original problem. 55 plus 40 gives us 95. So did those two angles add up to 90 degrees, add up to 180 degrees, or neither? Answer is neither. Nice job. So now you should be able to identify, define, and give examples for the vocabulary in the beginning of section 8.2. Good luck with practice in IXL. Thanks for watching. Aww.